But they can picture it mm. and they can start relating to it. And when you are able to make your interviewer see things the the way they were or the way they are, Paints you, the picture. you're starting to pull strings. You're starting mm. to get somewhere. And that is sometimes what interviewer want to see is that you've got what it takes uh, or that you are somebody sometimes that you have what they are looking for. Maybe yeah. not necessarily all the experience. I didn't have experience in science scientific research i only have skills in project management hmm. that was what my boss was looking for and i was able to show the skills that i had you know hmm. the, the skills that i had i was able to show them they gave me a lot of uh, real life scenarios and uh, scenarios and they want me to you know explain what i do oh, yes yes and i explained everything i told them how i went about it i also mentioned to them some of the things I should have done better, you know, because sometimes people say, hey, don't mention this, don't. sometimes just have a feel of the person you're talking to. These people are human. They are, they are humans. Oh yeah, my God, so that's treat it. Them, yeah, treat them like human beings. Don't treat them like robots. We all learn every day. And I told them what I did, what I believe I did right, what I believe I didn't do well enough, you mm -hmm. know, looking back at that time which I believe I will be able to do better. You know, at the end of the interview, my boss, which you happen to know anyway, yeah. said, oh, Emmanuel, thank you very much for your, for, for, for being honest, you know. And that's one wow. thing that we don't understand. When people interview you, they know sometimes when you're lying. They know. <laughs> and when you're telling the truth. So this is some of the things I will tell people looking for a job that, look, be very honest. When I don't know something, I tell them, really i don't know mm. but i can learn very fast learn. if you need me to learn that very fast some people say don't don't say that i don't know in all the interviews i've done maybe that's why i didn't get job early enough but <laughs> i prefer to be honest yes you know i know this i don't know that i know a little bit about that i can learn more i'm as someone who really really learns and is driven by learning i it's something i find easy to do so uh, a lot of things i will tell people uh, give it what it takes. Learn from all your interviews, the one you failed, and be when you do interview. Don't think, yeah, you've prepared, but don't, don't, don't put yourself at a point where you think I know everything, mm. because there will always be one thing or the other to learn from every interview. And I always ask questions um, based. What do you think I should have done? Or say better you know sometimes when they get back to me i just re and this is one thing i do when when i see the rejection email as disappointing as it might be yeah. i take a bit of time compose myself and i always reply i reply all of the rejection emails wow. and some of them yeah i always reply them i always thank them even if i'm not feeling happy yeah. i just say i'm happy you got back to me i'm excited that i'll, I'll be happy and excited if you can just give me uh tell me one or two things that i need Feedback. to do better. yeah so and many of them would not reply but some of them will reply and say we actually felt you you're a strong candidate for that we just happen to find someone that we feel That's is a, a better, better fit. fit some yeah. of them will say yeah you mentioned this we feel we're not really convinced you know they will some of them will be honest with you to say they are not really convinced yeah yeah so, mm -hmm. and it, it's one thing to understand that interview stage is a process of convincing your employer that you are the right person so if i say something and if i said something and they were not convinced about it and i was telling the truth maybe the way i said it was the issue mm. or maybe people could also have bias they could also have the, their own bias but i don't want to outsource the blame to anyone else yeah i want to learn from it so which is something that i think everybody applying for a job in us or uh, uk or us or the western world should learn from don't assess the responsibility take responsibility for some of the shortcomings because yeah. you will learn from it by learning from it you become better by becoming better you yourself record yourself sometimes ask those questions ask yourself on your own phone or you know and then answer the question that way you and replay it back to yourself 
So when you think, oh, I was just flowing in that interview, you know, when they were asking me questions, <laughs> yeah. when you record yourself, that's when you will see that you are actually not saying some things yes. the right way. And then it's it's also one of the ways by by which you learn as a person. And once you start learning and growing, you you find it easy to, to land a job. Really. Mm. Wow. That's that's a lot of honest feedback and information you've dished out there. Thank you so much, Manuel. Because I love the fact that you 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 start from the bottom up. You you sort of talked about your experience, talked about the skill gap that you needed to fill, which is it not because you lacked the skill necessarily, but you did not have a proof to show that you have that skill, and hence the, the certification. We'll get into that. Um, so maybe you would recommend that towards the end to say what kind of certifications people need to get that would really boost their chances but then you talked about also remodeling your cv to match the context to match the terrain you're trying to break into which is very important because i see a lot of nigerians or africans trying to get a job in the us or uk or canada and you're sending exact same cv you are sending to a company in lagos sometimes some of these CVs can be standardized across the board, but there are informations that are not very necessary, yeah. right? Given the fact that a lot of the GDPR policies are enforced mostly in these parts that you're applying to. So there are some information that they don't want to have access yeah. to, right? That they don't want to have that would get in the way of them assessing you based on merit. And there's a structure to your CV that needs to be there for them to easily assess your quality or your qualification when it comes to that job role. Not just yeah. talking about you as a person. And I love the fact that you talked about the rejections that you got. Everyone has got rejections. I've I've got rejections. I was going to even do a a short episode on that rejections aspect and maybe uh, failing at interviews and not getting called back because it is a very key thing for people to know that when you are rejected most of the time it is not just because you are incompetent it is because you are not the best fit for that job it could be that that point in time you would have gotten the job if someone who was better fit was not there So sometimes you get a job, not necessarily because you are the best at it, but because you are the best competing candidate at that point. So if someone that was better fit is there, they would have gotten the job you got, right? So you need to understand these nuances and be okay with it to know that I am not a failure and say all of these words just as a mantra to remind yourself that I am not a failure, I'm not incompetent, I'm not unskilled, I'm not inexperienced, but also be open which is what Emmanuel also did by asking for feedback. Be open to learning where your lapses are, taking responsibilities and not saying, oh, they are just wicked, they are just mean. You can ask for feedback. And guess what? It is even by GDPR standards that when you get a rejection, you can literally ask for this current sheet by which you were rejected so that you can know for a fact that this is why you did not get the job. This is why you did not pass your interview. I just recently knew about that. I was like, oh, really? You know, so these are the things that will help you sort of take an internal audit of yourself like Emmanuel did and went to get a certification and that increased his chances of getting called back. And even though the rejections are still there, but at least you've managed to truncate that lapse and improve your chances. So it's very key that people are aware of this. Guess what? I was in an interview panel and there are a lot of things i've learned being in that interview panel one key thing is that if we are not interested in hiring you we would not invite you for an interview because like emmanuel said i spent the whole day in that interview and we're interviewing just five people and i spent the whole day we all spent the whole day every member of that panel spent the whole day for that interview session you know and that is because i paid a lot of money for all of you to be there for that day yes you get what i'm saying and because time is money and we yeah. did the interviews i learned a lot sometimes you feel like you are you are rapporting you're doing everything you're you're rolling your and to us it's like mm, this person has gone off track this person has not even answered the question you've you've done a good job of answering another question that you have asked yourself not the one we have asked you which is why Things like tell us about yourself and why you applied to this job or what attracted you to this role should be as organic, as human 
as honest as possible you want to paint a perfect story but you you should be comfortable with the imperfections in your story as well because if it is too perfect it sounds rehearsed you would sound like a robot you need to be able to connect with the people that are interviewing you and demonstrating how your experience how your skills your passion are going to make you the best candidate for that role you don't want to just regurgitate what you have on your resume we've read your resume we've read your 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 cover letter what we need from you is that human connection and then being able to paint the picture like you rightly said Emmanuel being able to paint that picture so that we can be in that mental picture and see exactly what you have done with your life because we're asking you about yourself and how you are a best fit or what attracted you to the role right so some of these things are things you need to take note of and i think a good idea like you've also mentioned is to record yourself sometimes and listen to how you sound sometimes you think you're sounding very good and all but you're sounding offensive or you're missing out very key part of what you need to talk about so being present during your interview is very important being present don't just let your mouth do the talking you have to think it through and see okay what does this question mean put yourself in the shoes of the employer if i was to employ me what would i be looking out for for this role and that would lead you to say the right things to give the right examples because most of them would be scenario based tell us about a time when you did xyz you should be able to reflect and guide them through that storyline create the mental picture let them see it and let them experience it as well so i think all of these are very key and profound things i'm definitely going to do another career insight about interviews specifically just to help people understand some of the nuances some of the important things that people need to take note of when doing an interview sometimes you feel like yes i killed the interview guess what in the recently concluded interview panel i was at there was this person i thought was going to get the job apparently there were some things that other people did not find in the same perspective as i have found them right and when they said it and i realized oh that's true so you might think you've done your very best sometimes it's not still good enough you need to be able to look out for lapses where you are failing where you've made errors why you've not gotten that job get the feedback and then they will tell you that oh because for that kind of candidates they are probably not going to get the job if they now take the second step to say okay please tell me where my lapses were they will be able to say these were the things you were doing so well these were the things you weren't doing very well like there was a job i applied to emmanuel aware of this and i didn't get um invited for an interview and i asked for feedback and the manager was so open to say oh yeah we we found you very profound in your product management experience however on the business analysis aspect we need somebody that has xyz kind of experience so that you'll be able to lead the team and that was a very key turning point for me and i was like okay how do i improve myself so that i can be well-rounded not just on product management but also looking at business end to end and i've started taking um, steps initiatives already in that direction so this is not just because i want to get that job but also to improve myself for a better future. position in the future so it's very key to gather feedback and even appreciate people i know somebody who has just started working in the uk they got rejected after the interview but i guess they built a very good um picture of themselves demonstrated themselves their skills and everything such that the person who was offered the job when they rejected the offer they were called upon to get that job so imagine after getting the rejection you just insult them or just do whatever it is and burn the bridge and the job now opens up again for the next best candidate your demand or your your attitude has already blocked off that position they will go for somebody that has performed worse than you and give that person the job so some of these things are what you should look out for while trying to break into um, some of these western um, if you're from the african background these are the things you need to look out for and even if you're in the uk these are some of the things you need to be mindful of and that will lead me nicely to my next question emmanuel do you think that you being in the uk improved your chances for getting a job we understand that there are things around sponsorship there are things around some jobs could be willing to offer you a job as long as you can sponsor yourself i don't know how you intend to do that but if maybe you're a defendant or something then they will give you the job but for them to bear that burden 
of sponsorship there are things they need to consider to know whether they, or not they can sponsor you so do you think by the virtue of you being in the uk that improved your chances or what do you think other people who are not in the uk could do yeah. to improve their chances to to land a job in the uk or in canada or in the us the, the, the what i would say to that is this being in the uk uh, well one might say it improves the chances but also when you think about the fact where i was at that time i had at that point in time i think i only had about nine months left on my visa and uh, so in that in that perspective it did not really boost my chance as a matter of fact uh the, the the only thing i want to be very very careful by saying it does or it does not there are nuances to this and that's why i'm being very very careful to yep. say so if i consider at at, the, at this point at, at a point being in the uk gave me an opportunity to apply overnight and then start getting calls the following day because when they are talking to me they are talking to someone who is already in the uk and um it gave them opportunity to start talking to me whereas if i am outside of uk most of them will not talk to me but the fact that i'm in the uk that gave me opportunity gave them opportunity to talk to me does not also stop them from uh stopping to offer me a job because of my visa status so even though i'm in the uk my visa status at that point in time keeps sending alarm to them uh, look, this guy has only nine months left. We yeah. can't offer you a permanent role. We can't offer you a long-term role. You know, all those kind of things. Even yeah. when I was telling them that, look, this is the plan to extend my visa. Yeah. And I laid it out clearly before them and they saw it. It, it, it still didn't change much. In terms of the job that I got eventually, being in the UK would not have mattered. And that's one thing I want people to understand, because I asked my boss, you know, my boss now, but she was my interviewer at that time. <laughs> I, I didn't ask during the interview okay. because I knew I didn't have much time left time on left. my visa. Yeah. I knew I have a plan to get another visa. And if they are not asking me questions about it, I don't want to be the one to bring it up. So, but later on, after being in the system, I actually walked up to my boss one day and I was like, um, hi, hi, do you think, uh, if, if, uh, if I was in Nigeria, do you think I would have gotten my job? She said, yes, of course you would have gotten your job. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, how so? And she was like, yeah, we would be able to sponsor you anyone from any part of the world. She said, as a matter of fact, that a lot of people applied for your role from across the world from different different countries not just from within the uk from outside of uk mm -hmm. and i said so if one of them not being in the uk had performed better and they've gotten the job would you have offered them you said yes yeah. would have offered it to them so say, i'm saying this out to people so they can understand that your location does not necessarily stop you mm -hmm. from getting a job and coming down to the uk it, it, it makes it a bit challenging because getting those and i didn't know at the point i applied yeah. i didn't know even when i did my interview that my employer were going to be able to sponsor me yeah why did i not know i went to search for their name on the uk short uh, <laughs> of official, you know that list of companies that can sponsor the yeah. name i was searching for was not there but ah. that was the name yeah that was not the name they by which I was actually eventually employed mm. so sometimes people yeah. write themselves off before they even get a chance to True. stand so don't write them yourself off keep applying applying let them reject if they don't want you they will reject you yeah but the, the the thing is that like they say if you don't buy a ticket you don't win the raffle mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. so make the move let them reject you you have made the movie if i didn't apply for the you job will. i would not get it you will not get so you, you, you yeah, not so get it and you will not even get a rejection so <laughs> and the reflection yeah so why not buy the ticket the ticket is free i yeah, mean fine. it costs yeah. you maybe your time and stuff like that so keep applying it does not stop you 
from getting a job and getting a job that brings you into the UK or US or anywhere, it makes it a bit challenging if you're not in that country, but it does not stop you. For example, I got a job with, because by the time I picked up my offer for the job I'm doing right now, a couple of other companies also gave me, so it, it's like, like a rush. They just gave me offer, 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 offer. Exactly. After I accepted, yes, after I accepted <laughs> this and everything was just within a couple one week you, I think. you became after a hot cake <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so but after a week or two there were like flurries of offers mm-hmm. i even got a job where i've been I, i've met with uh the team i was going to work with uh, it's someone from the team i was going to work with yeah and um, they've told me that the recruitment team will get in touch with me um, by the time the recruitment team got in touch with me, the recruitment manager said, um, no, we're not giving you the job. Okay. And they said, I'm a risk. This is a company that can actually sponsor. Wow. Because their name is on the sponsor list. Yeah. And they said, no, we can't give you the job. And I was like, um, I have this plan. You know, I spoke to them a lot. There were yeah. a lot of front and back over email and over phone call as well. And they were like, um, well, if you're able to change your status, right now we'll be able to offer you a job so i'm just telling people that have been in the uk um can and may or may not necessarily be a factor but it will not it will not stop you from getting a job that can sponsor you if if you're able to get the job so being in the uk wouldn't have mattered in my own case because even if I'm not in the UK, I would have been sponsored all the same. But where it it matters is the opportunity that it opens up for you, for a lot of people to be able to talk to you and to learn from all those ones, you know, which you can also get via email. Mm. You know, when they reject you and they say, oh, because you're not in the UK, and then you can just tell them that, uh, but based on my performance during the interview, what do you think I should improve on? You, there is always a room for, for that. Let me close by referring back to what you mentioned the other time. A lot of people reply uh, angrily. Mm. You just wasted my time. You should have, <laughs> been, you know, and then said, bah, like that. Don't do that. Don't do that, really. Don't do that. Because the people, I'll, I'll give it an example and I'll close on that. An example of someone that I know, I coached them for the role. You know, I, I actually did a bit of coaching for them they did certification and then they applied for it for, for different jobs he went for it for an interview it was a physical interview it was not even in a, a, it's not even in uk mm. it's one of the uh north american countries okay you know, this person went there went for the interview as far as hasting interview is concerned he hazed he did excellently well okay because there is someone on the interview panel that knew that person and that knew someone that I know. So that person gave the feedback. Here's the feedback. The person went for the interview, did very well in the interview, answered all the questions very well. But it was obvious that everything he was saying was not coming from a place of experience. Uh... He is well rehearsed. He is is well rehearsed for interviews, which I did for him. I rehearsed, you know, prepared him for the interview and everything like that. So when they now asked the final question, are you sure you've really worked? Are you sure you've really done this before or not? He said, yes, I've done it. I've, you know, oh. so that person said, well, it was obvious to everybody that interviewed him that <laughs> he doesn't really have the practical experience, but yeah. he could answer all, nearly all the questions they asked him. They gave the job to someone who was a fresh graduate who did wow. not have the experience but, who said i really don't have this experience but i'm happy to learn mm. and that person told me that after you know when they just like she said the evaluation and everything this person came first but they were going to cross them out and give it to someone who came you know somewhere in between mm. and if he had only said i don't really have too much experience i have a bit of experience but you know yeah. but he said I know everything, I've done everything. Uh, and they knew he has not done 
everything. So why am I saying this? Sometimes just be honest uh, and say, look, I've done this, I've done that, but I've not really done this. I have yeah. the experience. So that, that's one thing I will say. But Amazing. Being in Nigeria, being in UK, it can be a factor. It may, it may be a factor, it may not be a factor, but the biggest factor is your mindset. Yeah, yeah that's 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 key the biggest factor is your mindset because that question is one of them questions that you there there is no yes or no there's no right or wrong it is yeah. mostly a it depends kind of answer like it depends on what kind of factors are surrounding the circumstance um that yeah. you're in and i think you've done a very fantastic job of of touching on that and again people should always know that interviewers or people your your hiring manager or your employer is nobody nobody wants a full cup let me just put it that way that's the analogy nobody really in all honesty wants a full cup if you know it all you've done it all you've seen it all then why are you even working you should be an authority on your own or write books and and empty that cup right but people they want you to demonstrate competence and show vulnerability where you are lacking experience and skills so that they can see that oh we can also add it's not they don't want to just add value by paying you they want to also add value by developing you that gives them a better impression of being a good company because if all they do to your life is just pay you money pay you salary then they've not really done a good job they want to be able to move you from where you are and then that way you can have sustainable and long-term growth with them because there are rooms for development and they are finding ways to fill those, right? So you need to bear that in mind because portraying overconfidence and lying in the process would not do you any good. It's just going to do you a disservice. Um, yeah, so I think we're going to wrap it up here. Um, and, and hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, I can get Emmanuel another time to share about being a project manager in this setting. I know we touched a bit on that, but getting into how it is done here and how you could scale up how you could grow and improve how you could work efficiently as a project manager especially in the uk or in the scientific environment i think it's going to be an invaluable experience for other people who want to get into that so they have a feel of what the day-to-days are what to expect when they're in that space um that that would be lovely to if we can pull it off and i would like to do that um, but in the meantime, I think we've done justice to this because Emmanuel has been phenomenal sharing his experience from the start to the finish, how he managed to get the job, what kind of interview processes he went through, the kind of experience with rejection he had, how to handle all of that. You know, these are invaluable learning points that I think anyone would benefit from, including all of the the, the, the skills that he had to um improve and and certification he needed to get and so as a last question before we draw the curtains what would be your advice for just a a word of advice for people maybe recommendation something they should do i know we've done a lot of justice in that area but more specifically maybe you could mention the kind of certificates they should look out for or the kind of universally applicable skills they should develop just to drive it home for people who are listening yes so thank you very much i will say if in that area as well what i like to do even for people very close to me is to tell them because project management is also wide and the application in different industries uh, differs from one industry to another uh, i always tell people what uh, industry would you would like to work for example you know if you are starting out your career in project management or if you've been in project management and you want to if it's not just enough to say i want to apply for a project manager role do you understand it's like being saying i want to become a doctor do you understand what medical doctor do you want to become you know so now for people who want to apply for project management role in what industry do you want to apply so it depends the industry will uh, will give the kind of certification that you need mm. or will, you know kind of Determine. for example if yeah if, if, if you want to go into construction you probably need 
it's, uh, it's education project management educations in waterfall you know maybe pmp and stuff like that in the uk they talk about prince too they talk about you know all those kind of things if for example if it is it they talk about certifications in agile methodology and stuff yeah. like that. so mm-hmm. you understand so it, it, it depends on the industry really and here is what i always tell people to do if you want to apply for a role if it is for example in construction in the uk go to job sites maybe indeed or glassdoor or any other you know go and search for those uh what's it called those job ad- adverts there that relates to the field where you want to work mm. uh, where you want to work sorry yep. and start start looking at the certifications they are asking for it will give you an idea of the certification you should go for because in project management there are a lot of certifications numerous certifications for you to do and it's always challenging for me to say yeah go and do agile you know this thing because a lot of companies are doing it if your interest is in construction agile will really not work for you mm. so it's best you yeah. go to do pmp or prince 2 or you know those kind of things or if you really want to work in it or you know just where you need to go for project management in, in agile methodology then you go and do that i have i have a chartered project management uh, certification i have ICA agile i have scrum so i i, I pick those certifications based on areas of interest where i've worked before the previous knowledge and experiences that i have and where i think i want to go to. i didn't go for pmp or prince 2 because i didn't really want to go in that direction i just want to go into something some something completely different so I, if, if if someone is interested they can go for those kind of certifications i don't want to say specific ones not because i can't tell i can tell you 10 20 different certifications from my head from my head but will they be useful for what you want to do you know what mm. the area you want to go yeah. into so go to job sites look at the advert advertised jobs look at the uh, certification requirements for those jobs list them down mm. pick the most frequent ones yeah you understand and go for them so when you go for them and you, st- you, you, you if you get your job and you start working there is a room for you to learn other 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 things so yes. in project management there are different methodologies frameworks just pick one run with that one you can learn others later on that's 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 really fantastic and i think this if i can remodel it i think it applies to every job now because yeah. this this is a fantastic way to actually find out what is required by going into the job sites and looking at what the requirements are because like you said agile doesn't always apply even in the it sector agile doesn't always apply when you have critical systems where all the checks need to be done before you launch you need a waterfall to make sure that you've dotted the i's you've done your due diligence before you launch so yes it is very important for you to sort of model your certification based on the industry you're going into and then i am sure there are some like you said when you've seen recurrent requirements it means some of those apply across multiple sectors so if you're searching in healthcare in construction in it and you're seeing the same certificates required that means that is one thing you should get which applies as a universal requirement everywhere and that would help you a long way Thank you so very much, Emmanuel. This has been amazing. This has been very helpful. And for everyone who has listened up to this point, thank you very much for sticking. I hope you you found a lot of nuggets, a lot of learning tips for you to be able to break into the project management space as a whole and even transitioning into the Western space. If you're in the African setting, you want to move to the UK, to US, to Canada, or wherever, you found enough learning experience from Emmanuel's experience to be able to make that jump. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I will be very happy to send them over to Emmanuel or have him come just comment on them. Or maybe if you can find Emmanuel on LinkedIn, I don't know, and <laughs> probably ask him your questions. Um, that would also maybe help you um, gain more insight into how best to navigate this career path. 
but yeah, in people have specific questions yeah uh, if they put there we can have another session like this where we treat some of those questions and Fantastic. if people would like us to have maybe a live uh situation sure. where they just ask session i'm happy to do that Amazing. what is important is for us to help people mm. uh to be where we are or be bet in better places than yep. where we are so wow that's that's very generous of emmanuel there you have it guys if you have specifics things that we probably did not touch on and you want to know more of emmanuel has so generously offered to come ag come again on this um, platform to share even if it means coming in real time or having a live session we could do that and he's going to touch on those questions those concerns that you have and help you make your career jump um yes thank you very much everyone for joining for listening if you have not subscribed to this channel i hope you do because more content like emmanuel has nudged will be coming your way especially in this aspect and i would also be dropping others in terms of interviews managing rejections and some of those things that would really help you to stay consistent um so until next time keep learning keep growing and keep leading thank you very much guys bye thank you everyone thank you